Hello everyone, it's Melinda, and even though my collection is a little bit piddly, um, I still thought it would be worthwhile to look at the mineral topaz. Um, like I said, unfortunately I don't have really any specimens that are mm, raw in its natural state. I definitely am looking into getting um, a beautiful brown topaz crystal in Matrix, but uh, just not in the budget at the moment, but that will join eventually. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd show you my uh, two sets of earrings and my little tumbled stone, and at the same time give you my usual ramble of all sorts of information. <laughs> Okie dokie! So, uh, topaz is a silicate mineral of aluminum and fluorine. Uh, it is one of the hardest naturally occurring minerals with a most hardness of 8 and is the hardest of any silicate mineral. Uh, this hardness, combined with its usual transparency and variety of colors, means that it has acquired wide use in the jewelry world. Um, <clears throat> I'll start showing you my precious topaz, or so it was labeled, uh, earrings. They are from, well, purchased in Indonesia and Bali anyways. I love the cut and the setting. I absolutely love these. Um, I was assured that they are natural, uh, what they describe as precious opal, or sorry, precious topaz, rather. <laughs> um, and the price tag certainly uh, fit the description, so I like to believe that I have here some topaz earrings. Um, topaz in its natural state is a golden brown to yellow, uh, characteristic which means it is sometimes confused with citrine, uh, which is a far less valuable gemstone, um, although natural citrine that isn't heat-treated amethyst um, can be quite rare and can be a little bit pricey as well. Um, orange topaz is the birthstone for November, the symbol of friendship, and the state gemstone of the United State of Utah. The term precious topaz refers to stones with a rich yellow to a medium peachy orange color, which is why I'm guessing my specimens here, my little earrings, were considered that. They said precious topaz, and I just thought, Oh, they said topaz. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I wanted to know why the price was so high. And that was the reason. So it was a legitimate reason. I just love the setting. I'll show me the back. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. my fingerprints all over it. <laughs> so the most expensive topaz is Imperial Topaz, which is bright yellow, pink, um, and very rare if it's naturally just pink, as well as a orangey pink. I don't have any, but I've looked them up and they are gorgeous. <laughs> Next I'll show you my blue topaz. It's just a little tumbled stone. Very, very cool to the touch. <clears throat> I love the little, it's like black and orange, probably some iron type inclusions in there. Love that. So blue is actually the most popular topaz color in today's jewelry marketplace. It is very attractive and inexpensive. Before 1970, most of the topaz uh, in low to moderate price jewelry was yellow to brown in color. Uh, natural topaz with an attractive blue color was extremely rare and very expensive at that time. Um, so as a result, it was seldom seen in jewelry. But today's blue topaz is a product of gem treatment. Um, 
<clears throat> almost all vibrant blue gems uh, began as colorless or pale blue topazes. Um, and this one is very, very, very pale. It does have the natural inclusions. I doubt this one has been treated, but it's always possible. Um, so the way they change that color, since it starts off as colorless or very, very pale blue, um, they actually do what they consider to be safe and very common heat and radiation treatment. Um, and that allows the, that striking blue color. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the early 1970s, gem treatment experiments revealed that much of the abundant and inexpensive colorless topaz could be converted uh, into blue topaz. Uh, the colorless topaz was first treated with high energy electron or gamma radiation and then heated to a beautiful blue color. Treaters learned that um, they could vary the treatment to produce you know, different ranges of that blue color topaz. So you can see a wide variety of different types of blue topaz gems in jewelry these days. I'm hoping mine hasn't been treated, but even if it has, I still like it. <laughs> I'm not too fussy about that type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so many people, uh, having learnt about this uh, radiation treatment, have become, you know, very concerned about the safety of blue topazes. Um, however, uh, all of the irradiated gemstones uh, have to be stored in a secure facility after they've been treated. And while in storage, the gemstones are monitored uh, until their residual radiation declines to a level where uh, it's deemed safe to be uh, used in jewelry at that point. So... If you have a blue <laughs> topaz ring or necklace or earrings, you know, don't be alarmed. It's, it's perfectly safe. Um, and really, it got that color in a fascinating way. So it can be cherished on multiple levels. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so a recent purchase of mine uh, that I got while I was in Jamaica is mystic topaz or caribbean topaz earrings and they are so gorgeous absolutely stunning i just love them oh my goodness anyone who says that's ugly is just crazy <laughs> oh look at that isn't that something <clears throat> Pardon me. So, uh, Mystic Topaz is extremely popular uh, in the Caribbean. And as an interesting side note, I thought I'd go over the pronunciation of the word Caribbean. Um, Caribbean is actually incorrect, but it's very, very widely used. It's even used in, you know, um, like cruise ship names and so on. Um, however, those that have grown up in the Caribbean learn in school that the word derives from an indigenous tribe called the Caribs. Um, <clears throat> and Carib is pronounced with the accent on that A, like Carib. Um, so it's not Caribbean, it's Caribbean. Uh, and most of the natives do pronounce it that way, so... I guess that would technically be the more correct term <laughs> if you care about origins of words and such. Uh, it doesn't really matter and I'm not really like a snob about that. I just wanted to uh, research it and figure it out for myself because it is a word that is commonly said in two different ways. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that kind of stuff intrigues me so I just had to look it up. So. Mystic Topaz is also called Fire Topaz, Mystic Fire Topaz, Alaska Topaz, Alaskan Ice, Caribbean Topaz, Bermuda Topaz, and Rainbow Topaz. Boy, does it have a lot of names. <laughs> um, it was first seen in September of 1998, so it's a very new uh, gemstone, uh, and this was at the Hong Kong Jewelry Fair. But it took several several years before it became, uh, you know, well-known. Oh, I just love it. Uh, so it became uh, 
it got its name, I guess, Mystic Topaz because of its attractive changing colors. And they do change, you can see as I kind of switch the angle of the gem, you can see all sorts of colors in there. It's just so amazing. Um, yeah, and it that kind of gives it a, you know, mysterious and unusual vibe, uh, hence Mystic Topaz. Uh, and it appears to display rainbow colors. Like I said, you can see so many colors in there. However, greens, blues, and purples are usually the more predominant colors in Mystic Topaz. But I can definitely see even some orange in there. Wow, it's just stunning. I'll grab the other one, even though they're the same. I'll show you what the back looks like. And there's the back. Oh, the warmth of my fingers kind of steamed it up there. Is that not freaking amazing? Oh. Gorgeous. <clears throat> so, in the topaz industry, there are also synthesized topaz, um, so it, it, it's possible. Uh, however, you know, topaz is naturally occurring and is pretty much an abundant mineral, so economically it's not really viable to, to fake topaz stones. I keep drooling over these colors, but I haven't yet talked about how they get these colors. So, um, it's again, uh, through the use of modern technology, <laughs> you're seeing that more and more and more in gemstones these days, um, a technique called CVD chemical vapor disposition, or sometimes is also referred to as a thin film deposition. Uh, the stone is made more desirable through that kind of technique. Uh, the process places a thin layer of titanium onto the back of a colorless topaz gemstone, resulting in an eye-catching variety of colors, like we've said. Um, and this topaz treatment was pioneered by a company called Azotic Coating Inc. Um, so it is natural topaz. Uh, the stone is real. It's just been given a very, very thin titanium coating on the back. Um, I suppose it's kind of reminiscent of like aura quartz or titanium quartz, but it's definitely a unique process uh, that azotic coating uh, pioneered. Um, and it's, it's very, very high quality, very, very thin, um, and definitely produces much higher quality and more beautiful results than like a regular aura. Uh, treatment. Just stunning. So I'm a bit of a history nerd, <laughs> so I always find it interesting uh, what these stones, like what kind of stories are associated with them uh, historically. So <clears throat> There's a lot of superstition associated with topaz, so the English superstition held that topaz cured lunacy, um, and the ancient Romans believed that topaz provided protection from danger while traveling. Uh, during the Middle Ages, it was believed that attaching uh, topaz to the left arm protected the owner from any curse and warded off the evil eye. Uh, and it was also believed that wearing it increased body heat, which would enable people to relieve a cold or fever. Uh, fever sorry. Um, <clears throat> and in Europe in the Middle Ages, topaz was b believed to enhance mental powers. Um, yeah, really, really neat. Uh, yeah, so that's it. There are my few very, very beautiful but piddly topaz pieces. I do hope to add to this collection soon. Um, but in the meantime, I'll be making more videos of different minerals, and I hope you'll join me for those. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys.